Hello, my name is Martin Pike and welcome to this lecture from the A University course on programming in the large. The subject of this lecture is encapsulation as a pattern for Ada program design and together we shall complete a series of slides and then you will be assessed on your learning using some quiz questions. A typical problem in programming is how much information to provide to a user of an existing package or module. The package developer needs to present a consistent API to their users and minimize the amount of variable information. Type declarations are such an area where caution is needed. Having the full implementation of the types accessible to the API user is error prone and in the following example we see two complete type declarations that expose their representation to the package user. An example user of said package can access the component parts of the types as shown in the example main procedure. This introduces maintenance issues and can lead to unintended uses of the package. However, the compiler needs to have access to the representation so to know how much memory is to be used for certain objects. So the representation somehow needs to stay in the specification but be private. To address this issue, the package specification can have a private section that is visible to the compiler, the implementation and any children. It is, however, not visible to the user of the package. You may be familiar with C++ and its concept of the private keyword in a class definition. A private section in Ada differs from C++ in that the private applies to the type as a whole and cannot be specified for an attribute on an individual attribute by attribute basis. Secondly, privacy is managed at the entire package level and not class level. We show an example here of the comparison between the use of the private section in an Ada package specification and the use of the private keyword uh, in a C++ class definition. Now we expand the question of who has access to the private section of a package specification. The answer is the package body and any child packages. In this example code we see a package stacks that defines a stack type private type and a procedure push that accepts a parameter of that type stack type and an integer. In the private section of the package specification we see the implementation of stack type. The stacks package body can access the implementation of stack type and indeed directly accesses the record fields. We next provide a package specification of the utils child package of stacks which specifies a procedure empty that accepts a parameter typed by the private type stack type as we have seen that is declared in the parents stack package. The implementation of the child package can access the implementation of stack type indeed directly accesses the record fields. However, we can see that any attempt by the main procedure to directly access the record fields would be an error. Although the implementation of a private type is unavailable to the package user, they are able to use the type in the same way that they would a null record. The package user is free to use it to type objects, specify parameter types and component declarations. They can also be used in copies, assignments and in comparisons. The following example shows the package stacks declaring a private type called stack type and using it to type a parameter of the procedure push. The main procedure is the user of the package stacks 
and is able to declare stack objects using the private stack type, using them in calls to push, making assignments to them, and in comparisons. There are two types of private types, simple private types and indefinite private types. Here we will cover simple private types. A simple private type can be implemented by any type giving at least the same level of capability. It must be a definite type and allow copy and comparisons so this rules out unconstrained arrays and limited types. So given the simple private type declaration of stack type we see three legal implementations using a discrete numerical range, a record and a constrained array. Two illegal implementations are also given for completeness. The example shows a failed attempt to use a discriminated record and an unconstrained array to implement the simple private type. An indefinite private type can be implemented by a superset of the permitted implementations of simple private types. This means indefinite private types can be implemented using numerical ranges, records, both discriminated and non-discriminated, and constrained and unconstrained arrays. When the package user comes to allocate objects either from storage pools or the stack using the private type, they must provide initialization. Here we can see the previously seen illegal simple type implementations are now legal implementations for indefinite types. It is possible to have a compromise between simple and indefinite private types by specifying a discriminant. Here we show an example where stack type is using an integer typed discriminant called size. The private section of the package goes on to complete the implementation of stack type using a completed discriminated record. A very powerful feature of private types is the ability to declare deferred private constants of any private type. Constants declared as deferred have a public view and a private view. The public view allows assignment and comparison implicit primitive operations to be used which are particularly useful for providing default values of any private type. Here we see a classic example of using a deferred constant to signify an empty stack which is made available to the package user for comparison or assignment. The implementation of the deferred constant is completely hidden from the package user, yet it's able to use an aggregate assignment that names the field specifically of a private type in its implementation. You are very likely to experience this pattern of code when writing ADA or reading previously written ADA. The private section of a package specification is not restricted to only providing implementations for private types. As a reminder, the package user has no access to any part of the private section of a package specification. In summary, we see the package specification can be split into a public and private section where the public view is visible to the package user and the private section is only visible to the package body and any child packages. We've now reached the end of the slide section of this lecture. You should now have enough knowledge of encapsulation in ADA to complete a small quiz with questions designed to test your understanding. Good luck! We will start off slowly. Here we introduce a simple example package P with a public section that includes a declaration of a simple private type named T and an implementation of T with a range from 1 to 10. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct 
or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. This code is incorrect. The implementation of the private type T must appear in a private section of the package specification. In this case there was no private section because the private keyword was missing. Our next question corrects the package specification of P from the previous question so that T is correctly implemented in a private section. The procedure main is now introduced that allocates a stack object named V using the private type T and within the procedure body assigns V the value 0. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. Again, this example code is incorrect as the procedure main has assumed it knows that the implementation of the private type T is an integer. It cannot do this because as a client of P it has no visibility of the implementation of P's private types. Question 3 uses a slight variation on the code used in the previous question now with the procedure main being declared as a child unit of the package P. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. This is correct code because the procedure main is a child unit of P and therefore has full visibility of the private section of package P. Remember that package bodies and children of the private type declaring package have full visibility of the private type implementation. The next question presents package P that declares a private type T and a private constant of type T named 0 that is initialized to 0. The private section provides the implementation of T and the package specification of package P2 uses T within a record type declaration for a type named T2. Procedure main has access to both package P and package P2 and instantiates T2 from package P2 as a stack object V and attempts to use the private constant 0 from package P in an assignment statement. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. This code will actually fail to compile because the private constant 0 within package P has its value set before the implementation within the private section of the package specification. What should be done instead is the constant 0 should be a deferred constant with a public declaration and a private implementation along with an initialization appearing in the private section. We expand the example further now into a child unit of package P called procedure p.main and a standalone procedure also called main. They both have identical body implementations and assign the private constant 0 from package P to a local instantiated object of the private type P.T. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. The code is incorrect. The procedure main has no visibility of the private section of package P and therefore cannot use the private entities which in this case is the constant zero. 
Question 6 presents a package P declaring a private type T and within its private section there is an implementation that uses an unconstrained array of integers. The procedure main is a child unit of the package P and declares a stack object of V that is of type T with an index constrained from 1 to 10. The procedure body goes on to assign the value 0 to the first element of V. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. This code is incorrect and will cause a compilation error as T has been declared as a simple private type it implemented using an indefinite type. This is inconsistent as clients are unaware of the fact that they should constrain the object. The correct package specification is shown at the bottom of the slide. This question presents package P and the declaration of a private indefinite type along with an implementation that uses a subtype of integer with the range 1 to 10 for the index of an array of integers. The procedure main goes on to instantiate a stack object of private type T along with a null body. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. The package specification of P, including the private type declaration and its implementation in the private section, are both fine. The issue comes from the use of the private type by the procedure main when declaring the stack object V. The use of an indefinite private type means any client, in this case the procedure main, must constrain it upon use. Question 8 uses a package specification for P that publicly declares a simple private type and a deferred private constant. The implementation of T is a number from 0 to 10 and the deferred constant 1 of type T is initialized to 0. The procedure main instantiates a stack object val of private type T and then within the body assigns the result of adding 1 and 1 to val. Click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. This code is incorrect and will actually produce a compilation error as there is no plus operator declared for the private type T defined within P. The penultimate question uses a package specification for P that defines a simple private type T and an implementation within the private section that represents T as a number from 0 to 10. A child package of P called constants declares two publicly available constants of private type T from the parent package P. The procedure main instantiates a stack object V of private type T and initializes V with one of the constants from the constants child package. Click on the check icon if you think this is correct or alternatively click on the location of the error. There is a compilation error here within the child package p .constants, as it cannot publicly reveal facts about private sections of its parent package. The solution is shown in the snippet at the bottom of the slide. It instead uses two deferred constants that are implemented and initialized in the private section. The final question in the quiz presents a package P with a simple private type T1 that is subsequently used for a field within a public record type definition called T2. 
the private section goes on to provide the implementation of the simple private type T1. For the final time, please click on the tick icon if you believe the code is correct or the location of the code you suspect is wrong. To end on a positive note, this code is indeed correct and provides a useful reusable pattern that you can use for hiding parts of a publicly available record type. Thank you for attending this lecture on encapsulation in ADA as part of the course of programming in the large using ADA. I hope you have found it a valuable step in learning the ADA programming language and that you continue on to the other lectures in the course from the ADA University. Thank you.